Hello, and welcome to the BMC Quick Course Series. My name is Thomas Smith, and I am the Lead Support Analyst based in Austin, Texas. In this session, I'll show you how to deploy your products to other subsystems, LPARs, and Sysplexes. After the install and configuration for your initial system is completed, you can deploy those same products to another environment. The install dialog will contain only information about the initial system. Then you will clone the JCL, change variables in the include members, and submit the appropriate jobs for your deployment scenario. The include members enable you to quickly change variables that might be specific to an LPAR or Sysplex, or you might want to use a different HLQ for your runtime datasets or need to specify different subsystem values. The job names and categories of the jobs identify which jobs pertain to your specific deployment scenario. All configuration options are supported in Batch JCL, so the installation system is not required for any deployment activities. If you already have your own methods for deploying products to other environments, you can continue to use those processes. This is not meant to replace anything you already have in place. This is only intended as guidance if you are not familiar with the products and requirements to deploy to other environments. Typical product deployment scenarios include deploying to another sysplex. In this scenario, you would probably be deploying to a test, dev, or prod environment and would want to use different runtime datasets than you originally installed. Deploying to another LPAR in the same sysplex in this scenario, you would probably want to use the same runtime datasets as set up originally, but want to extend the product use to other LPARs in the same sysplex. Deploying to another DB2 subsystem, in this scenario, you are probably wanting to use the same runtime datasets, but want to extend the product use to another DB2 subsystem in the same sysplex or LPAR. This is similar to the MSSID install or multiple subsystem ID install which is also an option in the install dialog. After your initial install is done and you want to deploy those products to another environment, begin by using the $JCL CPY job in your JCL dataset to make a copy of the install JCL. This copy will be edited and used for deployment. Edit the $INC include members in the new JCL library and change any values that you need for the new environment. If you have non-shared DASD, use your own processes to copy the runtime datasets to your new environment. For a list of the runtime datasets, look in the $INC GEN member for these variables. Set DVRTEHLQ, set DVUSUHLQ, set DVCBSAM1, set BMCPSWD. Use these high level qualifiers to obtain a list of all the datasets needed. The SMPE datasets will not need to be transported over unless you want to maintain a separate SMPE environment on the new system. If the datasets need to be copied to another system, but require different high-level qualifiers, you can either change the names through your own process or run the $200 series jobs to create the new runtime datasets and copy those to the new system. Begin running jobs at the appropriate job series depending on your deployment scenario. The job names range from the $100 series through the $900 series. The first member of each series documents information about the job category. The $1 jobs are for downloading and decompressing files and performing the SMPE receive, apply, and accept jobs. $2 jobs are for allocating datasets and setting up the runtime environment. $3 jobs are for anything that needs to be set up at a sysplex level. $4 jobs are for anything that needs to be set up at an LPAR level. $5 jobs are for anything that is common and crosses product categories. $6 jobs are reserved for future use. $7 jobs are for configuring any DB2 product. $8 jobs are for configuring any IMS product. $9 jobs are for configuring any main view product. Depending on the products being installed, you may not have all of these job categories. 
the job categories will aid in deploying products to another environment. Taking this through the typical deployment scenarios, to deploy to a different sysplex, I would start running jobs from the 300 series and continue through the remaining series of jobs. If I'm going to deploy the products to another LPAR, but in the same sysplex using the same runtime libraries, I should start with the $400 series jobs on the subsequent LPAR and continue through the remaining series of jobs. In this scenario, I would have already deployed the products on this LPAR, and now I want to deploy the products to another DB2 subsystem on the same LPAR. That means I already have the runtime datasets established, and any infrastructure required by the product is already in place. Now I need to run the $700 series jobs referencing the new DB2 subsystem identifier in the $INC DB2 member. A quick course on MSSID cloning is available to cover deploying to multiple DB2 subsystems. In this scenario, I already have the runtime datasets established and any infrastructure required by the products is already in place. If I ended up recreating the runtime datasets by rerunning the $200 series of jobs, then I would need to review the variables in the $INC IMS member and then run the $800 series of jobs in order. If I copied and renamed the runtime datasets, then I would only need to change the HLQ values for the datasets in the $INCGEN member and then run the $845COPY job. The $845COPY job file tailors the product C list and copies them to the user live dataset. If I am sharing the runtime libraries, no $800 series jobs need to be executed to deploy to another environment. Some IMS products require other post installation tasks to be completed for deployment. See the database products for IMS configuration guide or systems administration product for IMS configuration guide for additional information. When deploying main view products, if you need to create new runtime datasets, you should start with the $200 series jobs, as noted before. Similarly, as stated before, if you were deploying to another sysplex, you would start with the $300 series of jobs, or if they were deploying to another LPAR in the same sysplex, you would start with the $400 series jobs. At the product level, the generated $910 CNFG job indicates how to deploy the main view products based on decisions you made about the system or sysplex in the configuration panels for the main view products. The $910 CNFG jobs comments section provides details on which systems and sysplexes to execute this job. After submitting the $910 CNFG job, depending on the number of sysplexes and systems you have defined in the configuration, you will receive other $900 series jobs in the staging SAMP dataset. In this example, configuration was done for a sysplex containing four LPARs. Some of the $900 series jobs are replicated and will contain the system-specific values in those jobs. For example, the $910 jobs were generated, one for each of the four LPARs. Thank you for your time. For more information on any BMC mainframe product, please visit the URL shown here.